Amen. That is a glorious thing to have a made up mind to follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our scripture text was read uh, earlier by Sister Jones uh, coming out of that ninth chapter of Luke, the uh, 57th through the 62nd verse. Um, we will share on all of those uh, verses throughout the message, but I just want to lift the 62nd verse up for the sake of time and allow it to be the foundation. Amen. Luke chapter 9, verse 62 reads, But Jesus told him, Anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. First, I want to give honor to our Lord and our Savior and our great God. Then I want to give honor to our Bishop, Bishop Darrell B. Starnes, and amen to his lovely wife, amen, and to all of the officers and family and friends of the West Mark Fellowship of Wesley Amazon Church and the St. Mark Baptist Church family, amen. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Greetings in his name. Amen. And from the text that we have before us this morning, I want to share from the subject of committed to the work of Christ, committed to the work of Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we bless you. We thank you. We give glory. We give honor to you, God. For Father, we know that without you, we are nothing. Without you, God, we don't know which direction to go. So we pray, Father, that now in all of your power and all of your glory, that you would lead us and you would guide us by the power and the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. <coughs> Use me, God, for your will and for your glory. Have your way, Lord. Let your will be done. Have your way, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit overshadow me now, God. And then, Father, we pray that you would open our ears and help us to listen. Open our eyes, for we want to see Jesus. Then open our hearts that we might receive him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Ghost. Amen. Committed to the work of Christ. I am a sports enthusiast, and, um, and uh, most people that know me know that I am a Raiders fan, and they know that I am a Boston Celtics fan. Amen. Um, I pray for the rest of you that find yourself loving other teams. Amen. I, Our prayers are with you, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. I pray that Lord will get you right one day. Amen. Amen. But as I began to uh, think about the sports arena, and I start to see how early some of the young men and women are getting into serious training uh, for the sports that they are engaging in. And I began to see that many of them are starting at an early age of, of finding per professional trainers and finding people that will help them to develop their skill set. And then I began to think about how different uh, what we call us weekend warriors, those of us who go out and on the weekend we pretend to be professional athletes. We pretend to be those who are capable of performing at the highest level. And then I heard a, a story uh, about one of, uh, unfortunately, one of Bishop's uh, favorite teams, and there was a member of that team called Kobe Bryant. And somebody asked him a question that when he was playing that, why did he treat his teammates the way that he did? Now, I knew that Kobe had a very strong work ethic, and I knew that Kobe had a very uh, strong personality when it came to sports and that he wanted to be the best. Now, we all know that he kind of copied his game after Michael Jordan, but 
It's one thing that Jordan could not give him, and that was the work ethic and the desire. He had that on his own. And as I began to hear this story about him and how hard he worked and how hard he was working to develop his skill set and how hard he was working to develop into one of the greatest players to ever play the game. And they asked him why he treated his teammates the way he did early on in his career. And Kobe said, when I came to practice, many of them only showed up 10 minutes before practice. And when practice was over, many of them walked right out the door. Now, some people may say, well, that's what they were supposed to do. But then you hear the story of Kobe waking up at three in the morning, going to the gym to practice, calling someone at three in the morning and telling that person, remember when you said you would help me to develop my game? And the person said, yeah, I remember telling you that. He said, well, can you meet me at the gym? And this person began to say, well, what time is it? And he said, it's about three in the morning. He said, well, I'll see you a little later on. And so as this person began to meet Kobe in the gym, he said at around 5.15, he said, Kobe already was drenched with sweat as if he had been swimming. And he said, then they proceeded to work out. And, and he said, but he left to go back home and get ready for the 11 o'clock practice with everybody else only to find that Kobe was also at that practice. And he asked him, when did you go home? When did you leave? He said, I didn't. He had been there the entire time. He was dedicated to his craft. He was dedicated to putting in the energy and the work that was needed for him to become the best player that he could be. But as I heard this story, I began to wonder and I began to think, what is it that keeps us as Christians? from having the same mindset when it comes to the kingdom of God? Why is it that we as Christians don't have that, that same mindset that, that Kobe had or, or many other professional athletes have or many of those who are aspiring to be professional athletes? Why is it that we don't have that same mentality? Why is it that we as Christians are not willing to put in that same amount of energy and effort to become the best Christians that we could be? And one thing came to mind, commitment. We don't have the commitment that we need. We don't have the commitment to follow through on, on, on the things of God. We don't have the commitment to the kingdom of God in order to be who we need to be in order for the kingdom to flourish and to grow and to develop. We've got to learn to be committed to the kingdom of God. We've got to learn to be committed to the service of the Lord. We got to learn to be committed to the work of Christ. And if we are going to be committed to the work of Christ, we must be fully committed to his message and service. Yes, if we're going to be committed to the work of Christ, we got to be fully committed to his message and his service. So I want us to look at this text that is before us as we look at the 57th through the 62nd verse, and we will see what it means to be fully committed to Christ. Well, the first thing that we've got to understand and know is to be committed to Christ, we've got to commit fully to Christ. Yes, we've got to commit fully to Christ. Look at what it says in verses 57 and 58. As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, foxes have dens and to live in and, and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place even to lay his head. We've got to be fully committed to Christ. As Jesus was walking alone and, and this man comes up to Jesus and said, I will follow you. And he says, I will follow you wherever you go. At this moment, he's saying, I'm choosing to walk with you, Jesus. I I'm choosing to, to come with you. I'm, I I'm choosing to be alongside you. Now, when we talk about making a commitment, I want us to understand and know that we've got to make sure that our commitment is Christ-centered. Amen. 
We talked about it a little early in Sunday school this morning, and we have to ask ourselves a question. Why is it that I'm following Christ? Is it because of what I can get out of him or is it because of who he is? We've got to learn to make sure that our commitment is Christ centered. It's centered on who Christ is. It's centered on what Christ will help us to be able to do as we move forward walking with him. We've got to make sure that it's Christ centered. And notice he told Jesus, I'll follow wherever you lead. Now, this becomes a challenge for many of us because when Jesus leads us into the wrong place, our commitment changes. Amen. When he leads us in, in, a, in a direction that we may not necessarily want to go, what happens to our commitment? When he leads us to go down a road that, that we might not want to travel and a road that few may travel, what happens to our commitment? When he leads us to a place that may be challenging, that takes us outside of our comfort zone, that takes us outside of maybe even our, our skill set, what do we do? How are we responding? When we look at this, this man, again, has a state. Jesus gives a statement that leads this man to question, why are you following? Are you following because of who Jesus is or what Jesus can do? Are you following for the true mission of Christ or are you following for some other reason? This statement that Jesus makes to him when he says foxes have dens and to live in and the birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. It's a challenging question to this man, but it's causing him to count the cost. What is it going to take for you to follow me? What is it going to take for you to go wherever I lead you? This statement again tells us that we have to count the cost to follow Jesus. And I hope you know by now that no matter whatever the cost may be, it's beneficial for us to follow Jesus. Wherever Jesus may lead, it's beneficial for us to follow him. And see, we have to ask, are you dedicated to the father's mission? Are we dedicated to the father's mission, which is to seek and save those who are lost? Are we dedicated to the kingdom of God, helping to advance the kingdom of God? Are we dedicated to doing what the father has asked us to do? Are we dedicated to the mission of God? When I look at the text, he says, the son of man, and then when you talk about the, the son of man, he says, the son of man has no place to lay his head. Jesus used a term there called the son of man. And, and usually when you see the statement, the son of man, it's usually connected to some level of suffering. And if you notice the Bible in over 80 times, the, the term son of man is used. But when you look at that, it's telling this man that the title is also sharing with us that there's some humility there. There's, there, there's some humanity there. There's some deity there. There's the full fulfillment of prophecy there. When you talk about the son of man, yes, Jesus was the son of man. He came in human flesh. He is the son of man. There was some humility there. Yes, Jesus came down from glory and began to walk amongst us. There's some humility there. But he was also deity because we just saw in last week's Sunday school lesson that the word was flesh and that the word came and dwelt among us. There was deity there. But Jesus is also the fulfillment of prophecy. He is the coming king. He is the Messiah, the one who has came to lead us and to guide us. He is the one who's came to save the world. He is the one that God sent to turn things around. He is the savior, the Messiah, the anointed one, the Christ, the chosen one. So when you talk about committed fully to Christ, we got to make sure that we are committing fully to Christ in order to serve the kingdom of God. We got to commit fully to Christ. We can't make a half-hearted commitment. We've got to make a full commitment, not a partial commitment. I commit to you, Jesus, on Sunday, but I got to have Monday through Friday for myself, Monday through Saturday for myself. But we've got to learn that we've got to commit fully to Christ no matter what day of the week it is. No matter what's going on, we've got to make sure that we're committing fully to Christ. Because if we're not committed fully to Christ, we will neglect the work of God. We will neglect the work of the kingdom of God. So we got to make sure that we commit fully to Christ. But not only must we commit fully to Christ, we got to make sure that we commit fully to the message of Christ. Yes, we got to commit fully to the message of Christ. When you look at verses 59 through 60, 
you'll see that Jesus talks to this man and said, but Jesus replied. Oh, he just said, he said to one, uh, another person, come follow me. The man agreed, but he said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach the kingdom of God. Notice what Jesus told the man. Your duty is to go and preach the kingdom of God. We got to be fully committed to the message of Christ. Notice the man shows us that we've got to give immediate attention to the message of Christ. We got to give immediate attention to the message of Christ. One of the saddest things is that there are many people who miss a relationship with God because they don't take immediate attention to the message of Christ. Many of us have been here at some point in our life. We are in church and and the message has gone forth and and then there's an altar call that comes that that asks us to respond to the message. And, and when the message has gone forth and, and the response is now being given, or we've given the opportunity to respond to the message, many of us at that moment allow things to distract us because we have not given our full attention. We have not given immediate attention to the message at that moment and allowed the opportunity to slip by us. We've allowed the opportunity in some cases to be snatched from us. Have you ever noticed that in the moment it comes to respond to the message that that's when people fidget the most. Have you ever noticed that when it comes time to respond to the message, that's when people get distracted the most. That's when people began to want to move around the most. That's when people decide that they want to leave. That's when people began to do everything except for give that full attention to the altar call, the, the message that is coming forth in that moment. And some of that is intentionally by the enemy that's trying to work in us and through us to, to keep us from coming into a relationship with Jesus Christ. If I can get your attention away from the message, if I can get your attention away from the call that is going forth at that moment, then, then maybe I can keep you from being a part of the glorious work of God. Then maybe I can keep you from being a part of the kingdom's work. But notice what this man did. He, he, when, when Jesus told him to come and follow me, his first response was, I agree, but, but let me go and home and, and bury my father. Let me go home first and, and bury my father before I come and follow you. It helps me to see that we've got to stop with the excuses. Yes, we, we, we must see the value of the call to be a message bearer. We got to make sure that we understand that, that God is calling us to be a part of the gospel work of the gospel ministry. And as he's calling us to be a part of that gospel ministry, the gospel work, we got to make sure that we are fully committed to the message of Christ. And we got to understand that if we are fully committed to the message of Christ, it will help us to see people differently. Jesus saw value in this man the same way he sees value in us. The question we have to ask ourselves, do we see the value in others? Do we see the value in others that they can be a part of the kingdom of God and be of great value and service to the kingdom of God? If we do, then we'll be committed fully to the message of Christ and we will go forth and share the gospel, the good news of Jesus. We will go forth and share the message of God. We will go forth with glorious power because of Jesus Christ and give the message of Christ and compel others to come into a saved relationship with our Lord and our Savior. But when you look at this man, you find that he had divided attention. His attention was divided between following Christ and going back home to take care of some family business. Now, some have challenged whether or not this man's father was even dead. And that the man just making an excuse so that he can go back home and live his life on his own terms until his father had died. Whether the man's father was dead or not, Jesus' response was simply this. Let those who are spiritually dead take care of the dead. 
What he wants them to know is that the message of God, the message of the kingdom of God is important. And I'm calling you to go forth and share that message. I'm calling you to go forth and deliver the message. The kingdom of God is at hand. Yes, the man hesitated because it, it, it sounded like a legitimate excuse for him. But that's all it was, was an excuse. Because Jesus wanted this man to go and share the gospel, to go and share the good news about the kingdom of God. But the man had to, an excuse before him and he be, began to let his excuse take his attention away from the call and the message of Christ. He allowed his attention to be pulled from the call of Christ. And that's what happens too. The enemy wants to distract us from the call of Christ. And yes, all of us are called to share the gospel, the good news. All of us are called to share the kingdom of God. Yes, you may not have a collar on you. You may not be ordained in ministry, but we have the responsibility of sharing the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And every day that we go forth, we're going forth following our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going forth knowing that there are men and women are valuable out there in the world who are lost, but they're of great value to the kingdom. And we've got to share the gospel message. We've got to share the message of the kingdom of God with them so that they can come in and be a part of the glory work that is happening in the kingdom that we can deliver their souls by giving them the message of Christ and as we give them the message of Christ they can begin to live for Christ themselves and they can begin to answer the call to the service of Christ themselves and we commit to the work of Christ by fully committing ourselves to the message of Christ and when we understand that the message and the work is important yes the message and the work of Christ is important the work that we do in the ministry is important. The work that we do in the church is important. The gospel message is important. The people are important. And when we see it as important, then we may begin to do it fully to the capacity that God has called us to. But if we don't see it as important. If we don't see dying souls as important, if we don't see sharing the gospel, the good news as important, then we'll just be doing the same thing that the enemy is doing. Causing other folk to find their way into hell. But we've got to make sure that we understand how important the gospel message is. We've got to understand how important the kingdom of God is. We've got to understand how valuable those lost souls out there are. And we'll be willing to share the gospel, the good news, to tell somebody about the kingdom of God. The message of Christ is that God wants a relationship with us. And that God has sent his only begotten son into the world and he's paid our sin debt. And we've got to help people to understand that we are sinners. Yes, and we've got to let them know that we once were lost and on our way to hell. But we came into a right relationship with Jesus Christ. And because of that relationship that I've entered into with Jesus Christ, it's turned my life around. And because of that, I am fully committed. I am fully persuaded that there is no other way except that which to follow Christ. And I am committed to following him fully. I don't want to serve him part time. I don't want to pretend to serve the Lord, but I want to serve him with my whole heart, my whole being. I want to serve the Lord to the fullness of his glory. I want to serve the Lord with the fullness of joy because I'm fully committed to the message of Christ. And when we understand how important the message of Christ is, it's at that moment that we'll begin to engage and share the gospel, the message, the good news of Jesus Christ. And as we share the good news of Jesus Christ, we will help win souls into the kingdom of God. But notice it's more than just committing fully to Christ and committing fully to the service of the message of Christ. But we've got to also make sure that we commit to the service of Christ. Yes, we got to make sure that we commit to the service of Christ. Notice what it says in verse 61 and 62. Another man said, Lord, I will follow you. But first, let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. We got to be fully committed to the service of Christ. When we think about the church and we think about the call, the mandate that we have on us, we have the great commission that tells us to go forth 
teaching and preaching and baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. We, we, we've got that commission. We've got the mandate. We've got the message. But what's keeping us from service? What's keeping us from giving the service that God has called us to? The man said, yes, Lord, I will follow. Notice that each one said that they would follow. Each one said that they would do what he's asked them to do. But they each come up with some type of excuse. They each come up with something that would keep them from going immediately. They each come up with something that would hold them back from fully committing to Christ. We can't let anything keep us from fully committing to Christ. We got to make sure that we commit to give our all in service to the kingdom of God. Amen. Now we give our all to some other stuff. But what is it that's keeping us from giving our all to the kingdom of God? Amen. Some of us let people keep us from giving our all because they say stuff like, why are you always at church? Why are you, why are you, why are you always in the church house? Why are y'all always doing church stuff? Well, I'm always in church because I am a kingdom member. I'm always in church because I'm saved and I'm a part of the body of Christ. I'm always doing church stuff because I'm a part of the kingdom work that God is doing here in the earth. And because I'm part of the kingdom work, I'm fully committed to doing the work of Christ. I'm fully committed to doing the work of the kingdom. And I understand that it's a kingdom service that I'm giving. It's kingdom service that I'm initiating and doing every day I go out the door. But we got to understand, we got to be fully committed to the service of Christ. But again, each man committed. However, each one had an excuse why they couldn't do what Jesus wanted them to do. And there's no time to turn around or no time to look back. Notice what Jesus told the man. He says, anyone who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom. We don't have time to stop and look around. We, we don't have time to, to look back. When you think about what Jesus was telling the man, he, he used a farming term. And, and any of us who have been around farming or, or grew up in a farming area, or maybe you had some relatives that used to plant the field. And, and, and when they planted the field and when they would make their rows, they didn't do a whole lot of turning around. They didn't do a whole lot of looking back. They didn't do a whole lot of lollygagging while they were cutting the row in the field. Because they had to make sure that the road was straight. So they kept their attention on the road that they were cutting. They kept their attention on the work that they were doing. They didn't look back and do the work that they were engaged in. They didn't have conversation and look around and do the work that they were engaged in. But they were intent and they were fully committed to making sure that they had their hand on the plow. And that they were moving forward sharing the work that was being done. And we've got to learn to do the same thing. We've got to learn to keep our attention full ahead and make sure that we're plowing in the gospel field, that we're looking full ahead and making sure that we're not looking back so that we're not doing anything wrong, but we're looking ahead and making sure that we're in full service to the kingdom of God. And since we're looking ahead in full service to the kingdom of God, God can get the most out of us because we're fully committed to the work of Christ. We're fully committed to the service of Christ. And since we're fully committed to the service of Christ, we're fully committed to moving the kingdom forward. That's what we're called to do is to move the kingdom forward, to advance the kingdom of God. How can we advance the kingdom of God if we're looking back to the old life? How can we advance the kingdom of God if we're looking around at everybody else and thinking that we're missing out on something? I don't miss out on anything. The only thing I miss out on is being able to advance the kingdom of God further when I look around or when I look back. But if I keep my mind stayed on Jesus and I keep my mind stayed on the work of the Lord, then I'll keep advancing the kingdom of God. I'll keep moving forward in the kingdom of God. I'll keep the kingdom of God moving forward in this world because I've got my mind set and I've got my heart set and I've got my eyes locked on the Lord. I've got my eyes locked on the goal that God has and that goal is to win 
win souls for the kingdom. That goal is to win men and women into the body of Christ that they may be come out of this dying world, that their souls might be saved from a doomed eternity so that they can come into a right relationship with Jesus Christ and have an eternal destiny with God the Father. But if we're not willing to fully commit ourselves to the work of Christ, if we're not willing to fully commit ourselves to the service and the message of Christ, the world is going to go to hell in a handbag. But we got to make sure that we're willing to do the work, that we're fully committed to Christ, that we're fully committed to the message of Christ, and that we're fully committed to the service of Christ. But if we are fully committed, then we'll do it with all of our heart. If we're fully committed, we'll do it with all of our soul. If we're fully committed, we'll do it with great passion. If we're fully committed, we'll do it to the glory of God. And God will bless the work that we do. But it starts with us making the commitment. And not just giving lip service of saying, yes, Lord, I'll go. But having a heart and a mind that is set with our mouths. That we'll say yes to the kingdom of God. We'll say yes to God. But we won't just be with our mouths. But we'll say yes with our hearts. We'll say yes with our spirits and our soul. We'll say yes with our actions and our activity of our lives. We'll say yes. And we'll advance the kingdom. We won't have excuses. We won't have excuses. But we'll say, yes, Lord, I'll follow. Yes, Lord, I'll go where you lead me. Yes, Lord, I'll do your will. Then we'll be doing the work of Christ. But it starts with us committing ourselves to the work of Christ, committing ourselves to the message of God and committing ourselves to the service of Christ. Amen. Amen.